section fifteen of the pirate and the three cutters this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the pirate and the three cutters by frederick marriott chapter fifteen the mistake the avenger stood under a press of sail to the northward she had left her pursuers far behind and there was not a speck on the horizon when on the second morning francisco who had resumed his berth in the captain's cabin went up on deck notwithstanding the request of cain francisco refused to take any part in the command of the schooner considering himself as a passenger or prisoner on parole he had not been on deck but a few minutes when he observed the two spanish fishermen belonging to the establishment of don cumanos conversing together forward their capture had quite escaped his memory and he went forward to speak to them their surprise at seeing him was great until francisco informed them of what had passed they then recounted what had occurred to them and showed their thumbs which had been put into screws to torture from them the truth francisco shuddered but consoled them by promising that they should soon be at liberty and return to their former master as francisco returned from forward he found hawkehurst on the deck their eyes met and flashed in enmity hawkehurst was pale from loss of blood and evidently suffering but he had been informed of the apparent reconciliation between francisco and the captain and he could no longer remain in his bed he knew also how the captain had avoided the combat with the enterprise and something told him that there was a revolution of feeling in more than one point suffering as he was he resolved to be a spectator of what passed and to watch narrowly for both francisco and cain he had imbibed a deadly hatred and was watching for an opportunity to wreak his revenge at present they were too powerful but he felt that the time was coming when he might be triumphant francisco passed hawkehurst without speaking you are at liberty again i see observed hawkehurst with a sneer i am not at all events indebted to you for it replied francisco haughtily nor for my life either no indeed but i believe that i am indebted to you for this bullet in my shoulder replied the mate you are replied francisco coolly and depend upon it the debt shall be repaid with usury i have no doubt of it if ever it is in your power but i fear you not as francisco made this reply the captain came up the ladder hawkehurst turned away and walked forward there is mischief in that man francisco said the captain in an undertone i hardly know whom to trust but he must be watched he is tampering with the men and has been for some time not that it is of much consequence if he does but remain quiet for a little while the command of this vessel he is welcome to very soon but if he attempts too early i have those i can trust to replied francisco let us go below francisco sent for pompey the crewman and gave him his directions in the presence of the captain that night to the surprise of all hawkehurst kept his watch and notwithstanding the fatigue appeared every day to be rapidly recovering from his wound nothing occurred for several days during which the avenger still continued her course what the captain's intentions were did not transpire they were known only to francisco we are very short of water sir reported hawkehurst one morning shall we have enough to last us to where we are going how many days of full allowance have we on board not above twelve at the most then we must go on half allowance replied cain the ship's company wish to know where we are going sir have they deputed you to ask the question not exactly sir but i wish to know myself replied hawkehurst with an insolent air turn the hands up replied cain as one of the ship's company under my orders you will with the others receive the information you require the crew of the pirate collected aft my lad said cain i understand from the first mate that you are anxious to know where you are going in reply i acquaint you that having so many wounded men on board and so much plunder in the hold i intend to repair to our rendezvous when we were formerly in this part of the world 
the kaikos is there any other question you may wish to ask of me yes replied hawkehurst we wish to know what your intentions are relative to that young man francisco we have lost immense wealth we have now thirty men wounded in the hammocks and nine we left dead on the shore and i have a bullet through my body all of which has been occasioned by him we demand justice here hawkehurst was supported by several of the pirates and there were many voices which repeated the cry of justice my men you demand justice and you shall have it replied cain this lad you all know well i have brought him up as a child he has always disliked our mode of life and has often requested to leave it but has been refused he challenged me by our own laws blood for blood he wounded me but he was right in his challenge and therefore i bear no malice had i been aware that he was to have been sent on shore to die with hunger i would not have permitted it what crime had he committed none or if any it was against me he was then sentenced to death for no crime and you yourselves exclaimed against it is it not true yes yes replied the majority of the pirates by a miracle he escapes and is put in charge of another man's property he is made a prisoner and now you demand justice you shall have it allowing that his life is forfeit for this offence you have already sentenced him and left him to death unjustly and therefore are bound in justice to give his life in this instance i ask it my men not only as his right but as a favour to your captain agreed it's all fair exclaimed the majority of the pirate's crew my men i thank you replied cain and in return as soon as we arrive at the caicos my share of the plunder on board shall be divided among you this last observation completely turned the tables in favour of the captain and those who joined hawkehurst now sided with the captain hawkehurst looked like a demon let those who choose to be bought off take your money replied he but i will not blood for blood i will have and so i give you warning that lad's life is mine and have it i will prevent me if you can continued the mate holding up his clenched hand and shaking it almost in the pirate captain's face the blood mantled even to the forehead of cain one moment he raised himself to his utmost height then seizing a hand spike which lay near he fell hawkers to the deck take that for your mutiny exclaimed cain putting his foot on hawkers's neck my lads i appeal to you is this man worthy to be in command as mate is he to live no no cried the pirates death francisco stepped forward my men you have granted your captain one favour grant me another which is the life of this man recollect how often he has led you to conquest and how brave and faithful he has been until now recollect that he is suffering under his wound which has made him irritable command you he cannot any longer as he will never have the confidence of your captain but let him live and quit the vessel be it so if you agree replied cain looking at the men i do not seek his life the pirates consented hawkers rose slowly from the deck and was assisted below to his cabin the second mate was then appointed as the first and the choice of the man to fill up the vacancy was left to the pirate crew for three days after this scene all was quiet and orderly on board of the pirate cain now that he had more fully made up his mind how to act imparted to francisco his plans and his giving up to the men his share of the booty still on board was to francisco an earnest of his good intentions a cordiality even a kind of feeling which never existed before was created between them but of francisco's mother and the former events of his own life the pirate never spoke francisco more than once put questions on the subject the answer was you shall know some of these days francisco but not yet you would hate me too much the avenger was now clear of the english isles and with light winds running down the shores of puerto rico in the evening of the day on which they had made the land the schooner was becalmed about three miles from the shore and the new first mate proposed that he should land in the boat and obtain a further supply of water from a fall which they had discovered with the glasses as this was necessary cain gave his consent and the boat quitted the vessel full of breakers now it happened that the avenger lay becalmed abreast of the country seat of don dalferez the governor of the island clara had seen the schooner 
and as usual had thrown out the white curtain as a signal of recognition for there was no perceptible difference even to a sailor at that distance between the avenger and the enterprise she had hastened down to the beach and hurried into the cave awaiting the arrival of edward templemore the pirate boat landed at the very spot of rendezvous and the mate leaped out of the boat clara flew to receive her edward and was instantly seized by the mate before she discovered her mistake holy virgin who and what are you cried she struggling to disengage herself one who is very fond of a pretty girl replied the pirate still detaining her unhand me wretch cried clara are you aware whom you are addressing not i nor do i care replied the pirate you will perhaps sir when you learn that i am the daughter of the governor exclaimed clara pushing him away yes by heavens you are right pretty lady i do care for a governor's daughter will fetch a good ransom at all events so come my lads a little help here for she is as strong as a young mule never mind the water throw the breakers into the boat again we have a prize worth taking clara screamed but she was gagged with the handkerchief and lifted into the boat which immediately rowed back to the schooner when the mate came on board and reported his capture the pirates were delighted at the prospect of addition to their prize money kane could not of course raise any objections it would have been so different from his general practice that it would have strengthened suspicions already set afloat by hawkehurst which kane was most anxious to send to remove he ordered the girl to be taken down into the cabin hoisted in the boat and the breeze springing up again made sail in the meantime francisco was consoling the unfortunate clara and assuring her that she need be under no alarm promising her protection from himself and the captain the poor girl wept bitterly and it was not until kane came down into the cabin and corroborated the assurances of francisco that she could assume any degree of composure but to find friends when she had expected every insult and degradation for francisco had acknowledged that the vessel was a pirate was some consolation the kindness and attention of francisco restored her to comparative tranquillity the next day she confided to him the reason of her coming to the beach and her mistake with regard to the two vessels and francisco and kane promised her that they would themselves pay her ransom and not wait until she heard from her father to divert her thoughts francisco talked much about edward templemore and on that subject clara could always talk every circumstance attending the amour was soon known to francisco but the avenger did not gain her rendezvous as soon as she expected when to the northward of puerto rico an english frigate bore down upon her and the avenger was obliged to run for it before the wind is always a schooner's worst point of sailing and the chase was continued for three days before a fresh wind from the southward until they had passed the bahama isles the pirates suffered much from want of water as it was necessary still further to reduce their allowance the frigate was still in sight although the avenger had dropped her astern when the wind became light and at last it subsided into a calm which lasted two days more the boats of the frigate were hoisted out on the eve of the second day to attack the schooner then distant five miles when a breeze sprang up from the northward and the schooner being then to windward left the enemy hull down it was not until the next day that kane ventured to run again to the southward to procure it one of the keys the water so much required at last it was obtained but with difficulty much loss of time from the scantiness of the supply they again made sail for the caicos but they were so much impeded by the contrary winds and contrary currents that it was not until three weeks after they had been chased from puerto rico that they made out the low land of their former rendezvous we must now return to edward templemore and the enterprise whom we left off the coast of south america in search of the avenger which had so strangely slipped through their fingers edward had examined the whole coast run through the passage and round trinidad and then started off to the leeward isles in his pursuit he had spoken every vessel he met with without gaining any information and had at last arrived off puerto rico this was no time to think of clara but as it was not out of his way he had run down the island and as it was just before dark when he arrived off that part of the coast where the governor resided he had hove to for a little while and had examined the windows but the signal of recognition was not made and after waiting till dark he again made sail mad with disappointment and fearing that all had been discovered by the governor whereas the fact was that he had only arrived two days after the forcible abduction of clara once more he directed his attention to the discovery of the pirate and after a fortnight's examination of the inlets and bays of the island of san domingo without success as provisions and water being nearly expended 
he returned in no very happy mood to port royal in the meantime the disappearance of clara had created the greatest confusion in puerto rico and upon the examination of her attendant who was confronted by the friar and the duenna the amour of her mistress was confessed the appearance of the avenger off the coast on that evening confirmed their ideas that the doña clara had been carried off by the english lieutenant and don alferez immediately dispatched a vessel to jamaica complaining of the outrage and demanding the restoration of his daughter this vessel arrived at port royal a few days before the enterprise and the admiral was very much astonished he returned a very polite answer to don alferez promising an investigation immediately upon the arrival of the schooner and to send a vessel with the result of the said investigation this is a pretty business said the admiral to his secretary young madcap i sent him to look after a pirate and he goes after the governor's daughter by the lord harry mr templemore but you and i shall have an account to settle i can hardly believe it sir replied the secretary and yet it does look suspicious but on so short an acquaintance who knows that mr hadley send for his logs and let us examine them he may have been keeping up the acquaintance the logs of the enterprise were examined and there were the fatal words puerto rico puerto rico bearing in every division of the compass and in every separate cruise nay even when the schooner was charged with dispatches plain enough said the admiral confounded young scamp to embroil me in this way not that his marrying the girl is any business of mine but i will punish him for disobedience of orders at all events try him by a court-martial by heavens the secretary made no reply he knew very well that the admiral would do no such thing the enterprise anchored at daylight sir reported the secretary as the admiral sat down to breakfast and where is mr templemore he is outside in the veranda they have told him below of what he has been accused and he swears that it is false i believe him sir for he appears half mad at the intelligence stop a moment have you looked over his log yes sir it appears that he was off puerto rico on the nineteenth but the spanish governor's letter says that he was there on the seventeenth and again made his appearance on the nineteenth i mention it to him and he declares upon his honour that he was only there on the nineteenth as stated in his log well let him come in and speak for himself edward came in in a state of great agitation well mr templemore you have been playing pretty tricks what is all this sir where is the girl sir the governor's daughter where she is sir i cannot pretend to say but i feel convinced that she has been carried off by the pirates pirates poor girl i pity her and i pity you too edward come sit down here and tell me all that has happened edward knew the admiral's character so well that he immediately disclosed all that had passed between him and clara he then stated how the avenger had escaped him by deceiving the frigate and the agreement made with clara to meet for the future on the beach with his conviction that the pirate schooner so exactly similar in appearance to the enterprise must have preceded him at puerto rico and have carried off the object of his attachment although edward might have been severely taken to task yet the admiral pitied him and therefore said nothing about his visits to puerto rico when breakfast was over he ordered the signal to be made for a sloop of war to prepare to weigh and the enterprise to be revictualled by the boats of the squadron now edward you and the comus shall sail in company after this rascally pirate and i trust you will give me a good account of her and also of the governor's daughter cheer up my boy depend upon it they will cry for ransom before they do her any injury that evening the enterprise and comus sailed on their expedition and having run by puerto rico and delivered a letter to the governor they steered to the northward and early the next morning made the land of the caicos just as the avenger had skirted the reefs and bore up for the narrow entrance there she is exclaimed edward there she is by heavens making the signal for the enemy which was immediately answered by the comus End of section fifteen